Asian grocers are like the secret to getting the best mock meat if you can find it. I actually got this uh, little secret place uh, from my friend Abdullah. Thanks for the heads up on that one. Oh, the lamb yong section. This is sayur. If you can find sayur, this is Peking duck. Um, this is vegan. It's seitan and it's, a, it's amazing. I eat this stuff cold in wraps. You get the, the mock chicken version or the mock pork version. Amazing, great macros if you're doing the weights. Vegan soya hot dogs. See what I mean? Like this Asian grocer trick. If you have an Asian grocer near you, um, you get the best mock meats. Seafood finger. Ooh, vegetarian uh, seafood. Oh, mushroom steak. See, look at this vegetarian, but it's vegan. See, vegetarian, but vegan. Because a lot of Asian vegetarian is actually doesn't have eggs and dairy. Check that though, but see, vegan. Oh my god! <sighs> Lamb yong vegan bacon strips. <laughs> I haven't seen this for, I might just take this just because, just for personal use. <laughs> vegan ham, this stuff here is really good, even for the puppies at home if you want puppies, but this here is really good. More vegan duck. It's gangster, it's gangster, seriously. We've got the vegetarian chunky fish, we're gonna have to take a bit of that. We've got the vegan golden nuggets. Oh yes, thank you very much. Vegetarian satay sticks, are they vegan? They are vegan, look. The vegan sign. <gasps> vegan ham slices. This is the biggest secret, and I'm delivering it to you right now. Vegan calamari, bras. What? Vegan king prawn. Vegan nuggets. Clean them out, so they stop more and clean them out again. We're gonna take this and whip it up on the beach. Joey cooking style. All right, hello everyone. We have made it to the final video of the Gold Coast Sea Spiracy campaigning all across. Actually, it wasn't just the Gold Coast, it was also Sydney. But we thought we'd finish off with a little bit of uh, something a little bit more lighthearted. Because we found, like you saw before, some amazing vegan friendly seafood, mostly by Lam Yong. If you can find Lam Yong, you're in happy days. You know, truly, the Lam Yong prawns are the best I've ever had in my entire life. And everything's blowing away. So, what we're gonna do is something really quick on a super windy beach and uh, cook you up some vegan fish so you know how not to abuse the little fishies. So, let's do it. We've got two pans on. Bit of oil in there, oh, whatever oil you like. Oil is oil. Um, now we're gonna chop up a little bit of onion. Oh, just, just straight on the table, mate. This table, it's all gonna blow everywhere anyway. We're on the beach. Just boom, 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 boom. There we go. Onions in one pan, because we've got two pans. Here's one, two, boom. In another pan, oh my lord. We got vegan calamari. I don't know if uh, you guys know, but squid, super intelligent creatures and don't deserve what, they, what, what happens to them. Um, that's for sure. I don't know if anyone's seen the Octopus Teacher, the movie, but I highly recommend you watch it. And you can see like how amazing these intelligent little life forms are. So best to choose the vegan calamari. Let me just uh, put this here, we don't want any, uh, this here's, uh, this packaging's recyclable, so we'll just, uh, uh, come on! Uh. Yeah, that's how we do it. This is frozen, so it's probably gonna take four million years to cook, but we'll chuck it in the pan anyway. Ah! Ah! It's on fire! Ah. Nah, okay. It was just a little bit of a, uh, little bit of flame grilling there, guys, you know? It's all professional here. Anyways, this here, this is this chunky fish. I don't know how they do this, but they put seaweed around this, and this soy, oh my lord, it's, a, it's the best. Why would you murder fishies when you've got this? I, don't, I really just don't know. So we're gonna chuck a bit of that in there. We've got the vegan king prawns from, um, who are these from? A&T International. I do prefer the uh, lamb yongs, but um, we're gonna go with these ones today because we couldn't find the lamb yongs. 
in this pan here, we've got the onions, right? We're going to chuck a bit of uh, just minced garlic, isn't it? Water, oil, minced garlic. Let's go. Pour it in. <laughs> Look at that. That's, that's a lot of garlic. <laughs> Is that naughty or what? Who likes a bit of garlic? Yes. So anyways, uh, this fish is going to take a little while, this vegan fish. So what I thought we would do for the million years that this takes to cook is uh, read out some really interesting fish facts. Now these fish facts can be found in the website down below. We'll leave the link here. And you can use these fish facts when you're educating people on why they shouldn't cause the destruction of the oceans and the abuse of the little fishies. This one here is probably one of the most staggering facts. Uh, it's the number of sea animals that are actually murdered every year. And it's around 2.7 trillion fish are caught every single year. That's huge numbers. I know it varies, it's like between one and three trillion or whatever, but this is about five million every minute. Five million fish every minute. So that's a holocaust of sea animals every single minute. So 50% of the, the fish people actually eat come out of uh, fish farms, horrible fish factory farms filled with feces and disease. So what we've been actually, a theme we've been running here is about the bycatch, or as we sh it should be called, by kill. Just turning over this uh, vegan fish here watching the uh, garlic and onions there, because uh, that there's probably going to go off, the garlic and onions. Because um, we're going to actually do the rice in this one and cook the seafood in this one. So according to some estimates, global bycatch or by kill may amount to 40% of the world's catch, totaling 63 billion pounds a year. So the by kill, they basically just, they target a certain species, they don't get that species, they dump the rest of the animals off the side of the boat, dead into the ocean. And these animals can be the animals that people love, like dolphins and whales and turtles. Oh, this is interesting. Fish actually have a sixth sense, and it's called lateral lines. So humans have five senses, so do fish, plus more. They have a lateral line. So it's basically uh, special sensory receptors which allow fish to detect nearby ob objects. So like they detect like vibrations in the water. They can see sort of with their mind, like who's around them, what's around them. That's why you see schools of fish just swimming like crazy, like heaps of fish, all in unison because they have got this sixth sense. Pretty impressive. Are fish more, in more intelligent than humans? Well, I, I don't think humans can do that. We crash in into each other on the roads all the time. Pretty stupid humans, if you ask me. So basically, yeah, fish feeling pain. I mean, come on, it's pretty obvious fish feel pain, but. We don't really need a scientific, a cruel scientific study to test like whether or not fish feel pain. It's just obvious. They evolved to feel pain, fish did. You know what I mean? Like how, how, why would they even try to like survive if they, you know, didn't have a mechanism biologically to avoid pain and to avoid getting killed basically. Um, but anyway, let's go into it. So many studies have proven that fish feel pain, unethical studies of course. Sudden exposure to warm water causes instant behavioral responses indicative of pain in Atlantic salmon. A review of evidence for pain perception strongly suggests that fish experience pain in a manner similar to the rest of the vertebrates. Okay, so fish are cognitively impaired, meaning that they, they, they behave differently when subjected to nasty insults to their bodies. So basically the scientists were essentially torturing the fish, causing pain and suffering to the fish in these studies. And then the impairment can be reversed if they're provided with pain relief or drug use. So morphine, they're giving morphine to, to, to injured fish and it changes their behavior back. So that shows that they're feeling pain. And then when they were giving pain relief, they didn't feel the pain anymore. So like, look, I don't know why you need these studies to show, these beautiful swimming sea animals, these studies to prove that they feel pain. We don't need to be doing sickening research on animals to use our common sense. Um, the environment, oh my God, yeah, this is crazy, dude. 46% of the Pacific garbage patch is fishing nets. Fishing nets, the Pacific garbage patch, how long is it? How big is it? It's like 1.5 million hectares. We'll flash it up here because I've forgotten, but it's crazy. 46% of that is fishing nets. Like, I think that's a pretty good, like, sample size for how much of the, the plastic in the ocean is actually fishing nets. I mean, it's a huge, huge patch of garbage. So, um, 
yeah, it's, it's insane. And people are like, you know, they won't buy a plastic straw. And like, I was saying like, oh my God, it's lost the prawn. No, it's definitely plant-based. It didn't try to, sorry, it didn't try to escape. Definitely a plant-based prawn. So yeah, I was saying that um, people will go to great lengths to not use a plastic shopping bag. Like they'll be balancing like food all over them, like to carry to the car. But that food might be fish, cans of tuna. So you're just completely like contradicting yourself if you're buying fish, making sure you don't have a plastic bag because the fishing nets cause way more plastic in the ocean. Anyways, and the fishing nets is an animal rights issue too because it just, it, like floating fishing nets in the ocean kills animals that can't see the nets basically. They swallow the plastic, they get caught up in the plastic and they can't really protect themselves from something they can't see like a fishing net and get tangled up in it. And uh, Horrible animal rights issue, really. Uh, so let's keep rocking and rolling through these. How, how's the fish going? You know, it's getting there. It's getting there. Can we have a, can we have a little close up of that? Look at the calamari. It's even got the little, the little cuts in there. But this vegan uh, fish, these vegan chunky fish fillets. Jesse. What I'm actually going to do is uh, we'll, we'll leave the fishy, fishy facts here. I'm going to just move it into the. Uh, I didn't want to put it in here because I didn't want to uh, actually uh, burn. There we go. Oh, now we're getting a juicy flavour in there, aren't we? That's naughty. That's very naughty. So basically, um, we'll just stir that up. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if you can see that, if that's like... We're just stirring that up together, the fish. We're going to grab some... Uh, look, these are recyclable. So you just chuck them in a the recycling bin. But these are a lot quicker, you know, especially on the beach. Can't really boil rice in this wind. We're gonna um, make a little fishy risotto, but Asi Asian style, because to be honest with you, Asians do food better. Especially, I love Vietnamese food, one of my favorite foods, as long as there's no animal, abused animals in there. Boom. Chuck a bit of rice in there. Oh, get it into ya, come on. There we go. And also, what I've got here is another secret that you find at the uh, your local Asian grocer, which we're just going to stir that into the uh, the juices here. It's probably not going to look the best, guys, but you know, please don't fly away. Where's the other one? Oh, here it is. Just making sure no nothing flies away, because then we'll have to run and chase it, won't we? Well, one of the camera guys will have to run and chase it, not me. All right, so we got the, uh, this is vegetarian stir fry sauce, but it's actually vegan stir fry sauce. So let's just, uh, li kum ki. Boom. You can find that in your local Asian grocer in Australia here. Um, probably elsewhere as well, but. Oh, is that naughty? Is that naughty? Look at it. It's not pretty naughty, I reckon. If, if you don't get out much like me and this is the naughtiest thing you basically participate in. Oh, look at that. It's going all over the, the cooker. It's going everywhere. Come and have a look. Oh. There we go. See how it's like, just, it's rustic. That's what you say when it looks really messy, basically, is it's, this is rustic seaside cooking, mate. We want to help the fishies, don't we? I can't believe people love like Finding Nemo. You know what I mean? And they can still, like they, the kids, they love Finding Nemo, but you know, and the parents probably like watching it too. They still murder the fishies. Fish are friends, not food. It's annoying. Okay, let's go through some, a couple more facts here. I want to talk, tell you about the, uh, this study that I actually used to do in my speeches all the time. It's, it's, so, it's so amazing. Where is it? A study showed that fish can outsmart other primates. So fish and monkeys were offered two plates of identical food. If they start eating from the blue plate, then the red plate is removed. So basically they have to eat from, if they eat from the red plate first, the blue plate stays, so they get two, two plates of food basically. So if they basically eat the blue plate, one plate goes, so they gotta learn, okay, I gotta eat the red plate and we get twice as much food. That's what they had to learn. The fish solved the problem better than the primates. Of the six fish tested, 
They all learn to eat from the red plate first uh, after an average of 45 trials. In contrast, only two, two of the chimpanzees solved the problem in less than 100 trials. The remaining two chimps and all the other orangutans and monkeys failed the test. And you probably would never eat a chimpanzee. So you think, oh, well, they're smart and cute, you know. But you eat, so I know probably not a lot of people don't eat fish without watching this, but people will be happy to eat a fish even though they are clearly sentient, aware beings who display amazing traits of intelligence. Now, this is the most profound part of this study. There's a couple of profound things about this study, but this one here I feel like is the pr most principal thing. One of the study authors tried the test on his four-year-old daughter, the colour plate test, to see if she could learn. He set, set up an equivalent trial, and after a hundred trials, she had not learned to eat from the temporary plate first. So, the fish, the stupid fish that people, you know, they, oh, they don't feel pain, they don't, they're just swimming vegetables, who cares about them, have destroyed this guy's four-year-old daughter in the old coloured plate food test. Well, there you go. And we wouldn't eat, we wouldn't eat his four-year-old daughter, would we? So why the hell are we abusing and, and killing and eating these amazing fish? You know what I'm saying? Anyways, intelligence does not determine, you know, your moral worth. Because there are some people, let's face it, who are really you know, silly, stupid, they're not very smart, but we would still give them their rights. There are some people that are super intelligent, you know, genius, IQs of four million, I don't know, but we would give the person who is less intelligent the same rights as the person who's more intelligent. So intelligence doesn't, I'm just, I'm just teaching you that these fish are actually intelligent, okay? But what matters most is they are self-aware. They are in the world and they are, are aware that they're in the world, so they deserve the right not to be exploited, abused, treated as products. They need rights protecting them. Um, oh, oh, that's right. Before we, uh, this is getting juicy now. This is nearly done. Check it out. Look at it. Are you feeling it? Can you smell it through the screen? It's juicy. Okay. Um, let's keep going. Oh, yeah, that's right. This one. Collaborative hunting. Now, we obviously don't like other fish getting hunted. This is the ocean and they have no choice. But the most, it's cool if you, you know, you look at it from like the fact that the, the, these are intellig intelligent beings collaborating, but it's not cool for the fish that's getting hunted down, that's for sure. Okay, this is the one. Group of fish from the Red Sea use a rapid full body shimmy to recruit giant moray eels to hunt with them. So they do this. And the eel's like, yo, what's up, group of homie? What are you doing? And uh, the group is like, let's go and uh, hunt together, basically. And then they swim off over the reef like friends on a stroll. Here's some footage of them swimming together. How cute if they weren't going on a hunting trip, obviously. The study showed that groupers and eels who worked as a team caught more prey fishes than working alone. The reason for the success is the complementary role each fish plays. The eel is able to pursue fishes to narrow spaces. So they, the eel can get into narrow spaces, uh, whereas the grouper is more effective in the open water surrounding the corals. The poor victim finds itself out of escape options. So basically, we've got to get that because if that goes anywhere, no, get back here. <laughs> we got it. Um, basically everything's flying around. We've got sand in my delicious vegan fish, um, which I wanted to keep, but anyway, we'll put that there. Bit of sand, never hurt no one. We'll leave this for the seagulls. They'll be like, what's this? Oh, is this a bit of fish? Oh no, it's actually vegan fish. Oh wow, I'm not gonna go vegan now. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry about that guys, it's been a long week. <laughs> um, what was I doing? Oh, that's right, the eel. Before I said, uh, what was I saying about them? Oh yeah, basically the eel, they like do a little like, yo, what's up Mr. Eel? And he's like, let's hunt together and the eel goes in the crevices and they, Basically what it shows is that different species of fish are actually like mates in the ocean and they, they hunt together and stuff, which is, we don't agree with hunting, obviously they're in a survival situation and they're fish, but um, it's just kind of cool that, you know, there's, there's a whole world under these waters of intelligent beings who have their own little societies and cultures and, you know, intelligence and uh, human beings 
like ignorant, psychopathic, greedy human beings go in there with massive nets, cause a huge like fish holocaust, so we can have, you know, a bit of seafood, which is crazy, insane to me, completely unjustified. But anyways, let's, um, I reckon this is done. So, check it out. I reckon that's not gonna burn. Should we put something down there just in case it does? Okay, we'll stick it on there. See, we don't have much, many options. <laughs> just turn that off for a sec. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is, I know not everyone likes this, but this is a, uh, this is my favorite herb, coriander or cilantro, depending on where you're from. And we're just gonna sprinkle that on top. Look at that. Have a look. Look at that. All right, so what I'm, oh my Lord. I'm gonna have a try, I'm gonna try one of these prawns. Mmm. Mmm. Actually, sorry, it's flying around everywhere. Let's get rid of this. Taz will grab that. Let's try now. Oh, the sauce. Let me try this. This is the calamari. Mercy. I'm telling you guys, I'm not even making this up, eh? Let's try this. You get a close up of that. Look at this, right? Look at that. Mmm. Mmm. I'm telling you. So there we go. Not the best place to set up a kitchen in a windy Gold Coast beach, but uh, I hope you got a, some ideas here about the vegan fish. You can also make toe fish and chips like they do at Unity Diner. But um, seriously, everyone, please respect sea animals. Watch Sea Spiracy as well. Check out our campaign website, some pamphlets down below and some assets that you can share with people. And uh, look, if we all work together, we can educate people about sea animals and stop the suffering and mass murder that's happening. And you know, just try some of the vegan stuff. It's good, look at that. Amazing, and no one got hooked in the face. And uh, mm. Mm. amazing. All right guys, I'll see you all next time. Peace. <laughs>